Well, here we are. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is my final media tour video that I was able to pre-record and make for you guys. Now I'm actually filming this intro uh, in real time. I've been able to see the responses. I've been able to see people's reactions to all the information about the media tour. So starting tomorrow, everything that is media tour related is going to be about that discussion and about that conversation. But what we're going to be talking about here in this video specifically is Larry and I sat down to talk about the future of Final Fantasy XIV uh, as it relates to especially Yoshi P's statement about Square Enix sparing no expense with the future of Final Fantasy XIV. And I think that should get everybody incredibly excited. This is a uh, franchise that they're planning uh, another 10, who knows, another 20. Uh, and that's going to have a lot of implications down the road. It gets me really excited. As somebody who's been playing and covering this game, for over 11 years, I have to say, like it's been quite a journey so far. But why am I filming this in real time? How is this video set up? I'm giving people enough time that if they don't want to see like, you know, footage of Thavnir, uh, then they can bounce out or they can minimize. But uh, this overall, uh, I, the, the video should be very safe for everybody to enjoy. But I just want to give people enough time in case they're, you know, still making their way and they don't want any uh, potential uh, spoiler, even seeing a zone. In that regards, I always try to like, you know, do my best to make sure I'm never spoiling this game for anybody. The other side of it is that I've been gone. I think I, one of the comments I saw, I uh, was like, uh, one of my videos felt rushed and yes, all of the stuff was rushed. I had about three days to work, uh, write, edit, uh, you know, put out the, the content and thanks to my team, Wizfish and Creature and, and Chris stepped up to help make sure that things were all getting uh, scheduled and getting, you know, thumbnailed and, uh, et cetera. Uh, because Julie and I finally got to celebrate our 10th anniversary here in our 11th year. I'm sure uh, we aren't the only ones who got COVID delayed uh, in that regards, but uh, we had already uh, planned a, a trip and I'm not going to be the guy who's going to be like, hey guys, I'm leaving my house for a long time. Um, so I've been able to kind of consume uh, the content that everybody's been posting and I want to kind of open it up uh, and let you guys know about that there. I'm very thankful. I'm so glad that everybody seems to enjoy uh, the footage. If you guys want feel free to wish julie a happy anniversary in the comments uh that would that would really brighten uh, my day and hers as well she did surprise me with a nice little uh gift by the way so uh we are going to be diving into the uh the new switch uh you know maybe in a video if you guys are curious but um we've been away and it's been very relaxing and very like a, a much needed uh step away from uh everything but if that's the case just note that um <laughs> if the videos are, if you're wondering why maybe X, Y, or Z wasn't being discussed here on the channel, it's like everything you've seen over the last, like pretty much week and a half, two weeks has been pre-recorded, pre-planned, pre-scheduled and all of that. So I'm back and I'm very excited to share with you guys going forward. Another thing I want to kind of talk about right before we dive into the future of Final Fantasy, just as a note, if you guys are like frustrated by any of the negativity out there, and yes, there is a lot of negativity out there. Um, when it comes to job reactions, people disappointed about Sage and Summoner and you name it. Just note, that is as predictable as the rain. People having a bad reaction is the status quo for any game in any community. It's a part of the acceptance curve. So I've been seeing a lot of people saying like, oh, coming into my videos and saying, oh, Brian's really excited about that. That is relieving to hear. And it should be. Because at the end of the day, like everything in the video is subject to change everything as we go forward and not even with 6.0, mind you, but beyond, I, I don't understand the fear when it comes to like how a job plays, because we know a 6.1 is on the horizon. That's what we're going to talk about a lot in this video. We know 6.2 is on the horizon. We know you know, they're already talking about 10 more years plus in terms of content and schedule and how they're going to take us down this journey. Uh, we know Yoshi P is excited to play New World, and I'm really excited to see what he thinks about the game once he releases Endwalker. Like we know these things are ha these things are happening, and I could tell you, like if I could buy stock in in the in the curve of acceptance that gamers go and process information and news, like I'd be a rich, rich individual. But unfortunately, they don't sell those as like NFTs or anything. I don't know anything about that, but I just think it's a funny joke. <laughs> um, so just know, like if you're sitting here and you're hearing people frustrated by X, Y, and Z, that was always going to happen. Like there's nothing we can do. We've tried our best, both at work the game. And I've also tried here. And it just comes down to the point where like, yeah, we just, you don't reach everybody. Like see people are going to interpret things, how they're going to interpret them. And, and that's, 
you just kind of got to let them go through their process a kind of a grieve and an acceptance and a finally an excitement phase. And there's going to be more information always rolling out. I've been getting lots of DMS, lots of messages. And, uh, I hear you guys like, you know, that's always a, a good part of the discussion to have. And hopefully I'm able to bring some of that into the videos as well. So we can have like a really good discussion around like MMORPGs and, and more just like you're about to experience here with this video itself. So that is overall the goal. The goal is not to like encourage one way of thought, but to encourage many and to look at the pros and cons and the, and the trade-offs that we make with different systems and more. So if you got anybody, I just want to, anybody out there who's like either frustrated or confused by like how people are frustrated over Endwalker, that was always going to happen. That's going to happen with the next expansion. That will happen with the next game. Uh, it comes uh, a part of expectations that people build up in their mind, thinking something is one way and then turning out something is another, but without actually being able to go hands-on with the systems and the games itself, it, it's all speculative. It's all speculative, right? And, and it only would matter if there was no more updates after this. They're like 6.0 is it. And all the potencies are the potencies, all the rotations are the rotations. But that's just not going to be how it is. We'll see continual updates and they're going to be looking at that feedback and making more adjustments. But Final Fantasy 14 has an incredible future lined up for it. I, I, I have my own theories. I have my own speculation as to what that's going to look like. I've had that for a very long time based off of what I see in terms of development and the language the EOCP uses. Anyway, I've talked long enough. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for all the happy anniversary wishes in the comments in advance. I'll see if I can't make sure I can get to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video with me and Larry. Reaper took a bit too to learn. Reaper uh, is so cool. It's really, I really like it. And I was like, I was playing it and I was like, just kind of, you know, just read the set, tool tips, set up some skills, mm -hmm. pressing buttons. And I'm like, Hey, where's my avatar? Like, we're like, how do I get that? <laughs> how do I get him? Like the blue bar is not filling up. All right. Like, what's what am I doing wrong here? And then it's yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. You want, you know, tower good dummy isn't necessarily going to cut it for you. Cause you get extra, you know, you get extra buffs for when it dies and these things. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, there's clearly something that I need to, I need to practice on, especially for Reaper, yep. but aesthetically. Wow. And then when you obviously shift into your like avatar and, you know, and, enhanced form well, even that is complicated <laughs> yeah but uh but still like it, how it changes those abilities because for i wasn't like really keenly aware i was like you lose your weapon skills like those become mm -hmm. unselectable and i was like all yeah, right those are those are almost filler your one two three combo like it, it th this is the strange and interesting thing about it is that melee uh your one, two, three combo is like your core aspect to the job. Everything goes off of that combo, right? Yeah. Reaper is the opposite. It kind of, the one, two, three combo is just filler. You just do it when you can't do all the other things. Right. <laughs> Which is very interesting. I, the, the one thing I did appreciate about Reaper and then it went through and I tested all the jobs, like in terms of, I just at least whipped the job stone and, and caught myself doing some emotes in the mm -hmm. gear, showing off the, uh, all the level like 90 gear that you had. Mm -hmm. I love that Harothgar can have helmets now. Like it was so, so awesome. It had the hat. Yeah, yeah it had the hat for cool. for Reaper for Dark Knight. It had the the the, the helmet. Like yeah. I was like, yes. I feel like that's like a bare minimum that they should be doing. Like I didn't know that they didn't or didn't realize. Did they not do that in Shadowbringers? Like I feel like the job gear at a bare minimum should be equipable on everybody, right? They did some of it not. Most of like yeah, bunnies and and uh, and Hroth, like there was a handful of things wear. that you could equip, just a handful. Uh, and I think that like they talked about can continually add more, and then just yeah. like that, like we never saw them add any over the course of patches. And so it got to the point where we're like, oh, I'm glad that Male Vieira was there, but I was like, but what about hats? And it seems like yeah. that because people are like, I want to like wear helmets, like I want to see what that looks like. Yeah, and, of course. And so it's yeah. good to see that. And then Yoshi P obviously talking about how. Um, Square Enix is uh, going to spare no expense. 14 has become uh, an, a critical, you know, right. cornerstone of the company. Mm -hmm. That was exciting. That was so exciting to hear because I think there's Very. been uh, like a sentiment among a lot of the hardcore players saying like, oh, 14 is funding this game. 14 is really like the money that we're but they're not uh, thinking of it like that. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and, to, and to hear that that backing has me excited because yeah, like, guess what? You're probably the biggest MMO out, out there right now. Like, yeah, congrats. All right. <laughs> now, like, can you like, can somebody at least increase Yoshi P's budget, please? Like, <laughs> I think he's earned it. So what, seeing him talk about that, that trajectory um, mm -hmm. that they've seen from ARR all the way to now and 
saying that it's more than uh, the 24 million, but like their their current number is you know 24 million. And I was like, yeah, hot dog. <laughs> yeah, because it could be the opposite, right? We could be in a universe where that was not the case, and they weren't going to be throwing more money in it, right? So right. like, or or this game is pretty old now, right? So usually in this time on a lot of MMOs, it's more so it's peaked already. It hasn't peaked, so <laughs> no, it hasn't. I don't think it. I, don't, I think we've got a long way to go, especially if they keep making those inches. One of the things that, like, I don't. It's not ready for six zero, and I don't think it needs to be. But them talking about bringing the trust system into uh, or, yeah. or backwards, which was huge, because one of the core aspects that he hopes that the trust system does is it hopes that it invites people to go actually play the multiplayer, mm -hmm. like play with other people. And I, I've definitely been a proponent of that aspect because I think it helps take away the, that burden and that stress because then all yeah. of a sudden you feel comfortable and you're like, okay, I'll go out with, I'll go out with others because some people have that anxiety. Not everybody does. Like, you know, we're, we're all built differently. Too. My wife is a social, you know, she gets social anxiety. So trust for mm -hmm. her, we're like, oh, this is actually really comfortable. The one thing we right. want to see with trust is like, can my wife and I just go run a trust dungeon together oh and have two and have just yeah. two of the, the backfill so that way like we're together because i think that's one of the things that 14 doesn't yet cater or serve it doesn't serve those oddly specific parties yeah like a duo it serves yeah. one it serves four it serves eight it serves 24 it serves 72 like it's it serves these yeah. numbers in that kind of like that kind of cadence but it doesn't serve a two it doesn't serve a three and if it right. i think the trust system if they if they eventually kind of do that i think that'll end up being a little bit more comfortable hey my friend invited me to play this game great rather than like okay go play this game solo and then we can play together as opposed to like hey let's go and become social just you and me mm -hmm. and we can just bring some bots that we can you know not worry about and yeah so, yeah that'll it'll make it even more like an rpg which is like i think what he wants it to be viewed at is is it's a it's a final fantasy rpg i mean you say it a lot too it's a final it's an rpg first RP, and then, yeah and chris gets mad at me because he's like no it's not because he comes from wow it is he comes from it, wow and he's like that like he's got that like wow i think did a lot of like as far as uh, big as it got like i think it overall did a lot of the disservices too about like some uh, of the social connections and so i say rpg mmo right. and i don't think that's a bad thing i think essentially it's, not. it's yeah. an invitation into the mmo as opposed to like I can't play this game because of I don't like MMOs. Well, I got good news for you. You can't. Like, <laughs> now you, and especially when we get the, the trusts and, and, and yeah. back there that people can come and play through the story. And then if they want to not stick play around, with the person at all. Right. <laughs> and it's like, and people are like, oh, like, you know, like it's supposed to be social. It's like, they're not already being social. Like it's, they're, they're just not playing the game at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, let's see, let's, let's fix that problem. But I think mixing and matching and the trust system and the investment that they've been saying that they're making has me excited because yeah we're losing belts but i think essentially like as they're working behind the scenes i think we're going to continue to see like the engine itself that you know the code itself can be evolved mm -hmm. and be upgraded and i think they know where they need to go right like when you look at yoshi p talking about like oh will it be uh, final fantasy 17 be an mmo and him talking mm -hmm. about like the heartburn of trying to move a community like yeah. from one game to another it's like it's impossible it, it is so hard to move a community and you outside of gaming you want to see how hard it is like ninja went to mixer that didn't work like people yeah, move, it's like not... it's it's it, a community that looks like hey we like being over here this is what we do and so like within mm -hmm. a game i but the only thing i could think that they would do is that it's still connected because yoshi p talked about how at some point maybe the number 14 doesn't make sense and that 14 just becomes 17 just or final something fantasy like, online or final fantasy online yeah. it's just like yep and it's you know boop boop you know here you go mm. and uh it just becomes kind of like the segmented chapters i don't know like at the end of the day i think we'll have a better ability to speculate on like what the future of 14 looks like after we finish 6.0 and it concludes yes. the story like right oh it's, what what 6.1 like it's so bizarre to think about it's like oh my god this but is it's 10 year story but it's so important <laughs> because like at some point players would get frustrated like oh yeah uh, yeah, he's, yeah he's 100 right. right like you're telling a story definitely the story is defined not just by the beginning end. and the middle but it, by its end and that's something yeah. we've been saying for a long time but i the curiosity is like what happens next like are we starting right. another saga or is six one to six five all like these each, more more condensed little like mini stories each expansion is a story and an overall like arc I mean, but yeah, are they going to do another big arc or are they going to do yeah. like, okay, you know, here's the, 
I think essentially like how they did it with ARR through Endwalker is that it was each was a condensed story, but there was this other, other overarching. Arc. Yeah, I think they can do that again. That, that would be my that would be what I would like. Is yeah, essentially that again, because I like the big arcs, right? I mean, that's why I like this game for so long is the big it's a big story arc right. over spans years and years, right? I like that. So I kind of hope it's like that again, but I would be OK with just completely condensed stories, too. I have a feeling like those characters are going to be different too, because if they want to do that, you can't like you can't necessarily keep all the same characters in the story mm -hmm. in a new story, because then it's not necessarily a new story. You you have to you have to know what all these characters did, right? Yeah. You would you would have all this context of the like Alfino. You're adventuring with Alfino. You would have to know Alfino went on this ten year adventure, and if you don't know that, you're missing out, right? Mm -hmm. So. I wonder if it's going to be a new cast of characters or if they have like maybe a mix or because I don't think it's going to be the same cast throughout after 6.0 again. You can have some of the same cast, but you have to have a time jump. Yeah, you, right. You could do a time jump. That that would do it. Yeah. Well, imagine seeing Alpha No and Al as they grown up, assuming they survive, yeah. right? You know, all of that a sudden. That would be great. Like, hey, guess what? He's now on the Council of Charlotte, like where enough time has had passed. Yes. <laughs> Yes, this is going to be a that video that people look back to and be like, how is Brian and Larry so like, <laughs> how are they calling it? Like, guys, we've secretly been writing the story this whole time. Yeah, we just decided to roll Evan the... Sok. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, don't, you, you look at him. He looks like Evan Sok. He's got the little white hair like hanging down. You know, it's like perfect. Uh, such that would be great. Such inspiration was our intention. So <laughs> I love time skips and stories. Time skips. A lot of people don't. Time skips are great. I love them. They, they're they're great to... when they like they give you a new way of reintroducing a character that if you've yeah. known that character, it's exciting to see how they've evolved. Like I think right. Parks and Recreation did this perfectly. If anybody's ever followed that, the last season of Parks and Recreation has a big time jump, and then oh. you get to see these characters that you've that you've loved and you've known in a new light. Shadowbringers, in an extent, did that to where their souls had a time jump, and so yeah. you kind of get caught up on like what has their life been like on the first. And how have they matured through this experience in different ways? And so you do see yeah. that how, you know, like some tension, some friction in the relationships because, hey, you're a ghostly kind different. of person on this place. But then essentially like, OK, by the way, like, OK, there's been peace like there or something like what's happened and what's your life been like? And then all of a sudden you, you like imagine being like like a significant jump. The last jump 14 went under it was five years. Like that's yeah. what a 1.0 to 2.0 like a 30 year job. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden it's like you've, they've got families. They've like their, the, maybe their outlook has changed. The politics have changed because no matter an old jaded man, like, it's possible, right? Like, yeah. you know, an I young idealistic, but then essentially maybe worn down and then essentially like you or then inspiring, you're bringing back out that, that hope, right. You know, cause he yeah. represents hope uh, throughout, like through as a big part of the story in a way that like where his hope ended up, biting him in the butt because he wasn't he was he wasn't really keenly aware of like how it could go wrong but then now yeah, he is and so it's optimistic it's a mature a maturity of hope that it's like hey we're going to do what we're what we need to do and we're going to hope that it, it gets settled but we yeah like people are going to try to stop us and sometimes those yeah. people are maybe the people who are walking alongside of us because they're very curious as to what's what's about to happen yeah alfino has has a great character development throughout he the does. story. He does. Yeah, I I, I really liked uh, I really enjoyed his journey. Really enjoyed Alice's journey and mm -hmm. especially with the tension that we're going to experience with their father like how is, is that going to be resolved? Is their father like is there something going on behind the scenes? And that's just where I think if yeah. they did if they did decide to keep Alpha and Alize like or, or characters that yes, significant things would need to occur that we wouldn't witness. So that there's some mystery in rediscovering the character over time because people change. And that's that, mm -hmm. that the, it's always kind of the, the, the thing that's that I find the most humorous is that we're afraid of change, but if things don't change, we hate it. Yes. And yeah. so <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> like, it, you know, great. Like it one, you know, like the, we'll hear this critique of Ben Walker. I'm for sure. Two tomes in a raid. whoop de doo Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like at some point, like we've, they need to kind of, you know, we want some change in that regards for veterans, for new players. It has, it's a, it's a great system. Like it, it, it's yeah. a good system. It works. It's been proven expansion over expansion, but no, it's great. Having the consistency is good. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll be neat to see. 
in the in the end how that um, goes with their dad i feel like have, do you watch gundam do you or mm -hmm. have you seen any gundam you have yeah which which ones have you seen this is sidetracked but have you oh seen double gosh. o or like no. okay. like I, i'm the worst anime fan boy because i don't watch a lot one? of television yeah it's a lot of the older ones I don't okay. watch television. That's like, I just, I, I like, if you're going to be like, Brian, TV or games, games. Like, it's like, okay, I'm going to uh -huh. go play a game. Yeah. Um, so what I've done is, like, typically what I end up doing is, like, I, I I build it up and build it up. And then when I'm sick, I just go and pick an anime. And I, yeah, and you <laughs> and binge it. Sometimes binge you binge. It. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I, I like But I don't, and thankfully, I'm for whatever reason, outside of COVID last year, I don't get sick that much. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been sick in so long. <laughs> it's like, that come at my, you know, like, I'm not rooting for it, but. The uh, the last time, like when I got COVID, I ended up just like finishing off like the Flash, and then I just oh, what did, I did work on an anime. And I can't remember now. I think I did Death Note, and that was phenomenal. Woo you know, yeah. and it's like I love that. Oh, I wish so I could forget deep. that and rewatch it. Yeah. Wow. Well, but um, let me just so write your name. Let me just write. You just got to sign the book, and yeah. uh, and, and then all of a sudden, you're, and then there you go, man. You're not gonna know what's forget. happening. Yeah, you are, I think he had to abandon the book. I forgot I had what to he had give to give it to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah to be like, oh, it's not mine anymore. Whoa, um, yeah. So, if you've seen Gundam Seed, or if not, uh, this is a common theme in Gundams. Seed but makes, yeah, uh, in Gundams, there a lot of the time there's this nation that doesn't want to be in the war, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and so they they stay out of the war. This is like Charlian. Yeah, stay out of the war, keep to themselves, but they just super advance their technology, right? So Charlian's gonna have this crazy awesome technology, and they're gonna know about everything, right? They're gonna know about. Amarat, they're going to know about the end of the world. They're going to know exactly what caused the calamity in the first place. The very first sundering. Or like, they're going to know all everything, right? Yeah. Because they have all this forbidden knowledge. So keeping that in mind, and Alfino and Alice's dad was a jerk, right? Mm -hmm. Almost on purpose. Yeah. He was purposely a jerk. So maybe he's not a jerk and he's just trying to care for them and being like, don't interfere here. We're doing this thing. Please don't interfere. Something, some crap's gonna go down, right? That's so, exactly. That's what I've been thinking. Yeah, it, that's think what that's I'm excited about. to discover. I'm, I'm excited to discover, and so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, hundred percent. Very exciting. Yeah, the uh, do, and you got to walk around the Charlene zone. I walked around a little bit. I didn't. Um, something that I did in the Shadowbringers one that I wish I didn't was I explored everywhere mm -hmm. and I kind of wanted to save that for actually yeah. being there. Yeah. So I kind of didn't look around a lot. I just found a spot that was like nice and scenic and that's where I did a lot of my footage for like the jobs. Yeah. So I did that. Yeah. And um, I didn't want to do the dungeon because again, I didn't, I wanted to save that for the expansion, but I did because i wanted to know what summoner was like before 90 because at 90 is when you get the big summons right so yes. i was like well what happens what happens when you don't it? have the big summons? Yeah. you you just summon the little leggies yeah <laughs> I, I appreciated that because it's like okay cool because then there's that, that stepping up it's gonna make 90 content feel like really significant and cool yeah and then on mm -hmm. top of that though it was cool to see how your abilities integrate because you didn't have the bigger summons so it's like oh i, I don't have this other ability yet so it, it, it continued to evolve and i appreciated that it was it, and it wasn't so bad like i didn't feel like i was completely like out of my element so yeah, that made me go fine. like oh as summoner evolves it's gonna i think hopefully feel like really natural yeah i think even in low levels it's gonna feel good because you have like essentially what dreadworm trance is even mm -hmm. like from the beginning yes like level like five or whatever it is like yes. you, uh or ten something you have that thing that becomes dreadworm trance and it's just a thing that boost your other stuff right mm -hmm. so i think that's cool that's yeah and then that. you then you get like the different carbuncles to summon yeah. in place of the summons and so that goes to that that has me helpful yeah. that at some point like we'll get a true glamour system in terms of the summons and maybe at some point <laughs> you just can slot them in or out or something i i i, I dream I hope. Eggy glamours. well you know you kind of <laughs> have it with like you want to you know have your egg your, your carbuncle like this sorry yeah. cut it out i'm not talking about the movie <laughs> wally all right Get away, go away, quiet, Siri. All right, that's, that's <laughs> enough of that. Um, dude, thanks for hanging out with me. Yeah, I turned that into so a video as well because I was like, Yeah, it's like cool. here's <laughs> Brian and Larry speculating again about uh -huh. the future. Guys, if you want to know what's coming up with N Walker and then 7.0, guys, stay tuned for our next video 7.0 predictions <laughs> with Brian and Larry. Dad Gummit, these guys are prolific. Uh, <laughs> all right, man, I uh, appreciate you, dude. You have a good one.
a little off topic, but I just want to say thank you for providing me a friendly, fun, and optimistic community. Baby. Coming from an MMO community filled with toxicity, this is an amazing breath of fresh air. <laughs> Keep it up, baby. Oh, yeah.